Oh, I swear, if this is bad. Watch it. Oh. One crowded hallway symbolizes an entire school. Outstanding students, an inadequate building, a culture of diversity and progress, and a county government that lags behind. This is the story of Centennial High School. The good and the ugly. The history of a thriving school and a thriving community. And the story of a similar school elsewhere in the district and what it takes to finally get something done. This is a new centennial. There's a hallway. You know the one hallway? There's this one conjunction. The one hallway, yeah, it's very crowded. That hallway is extremely overcrowded. There's literally traffic jams. Yeah, that's always crowded. Really narrow. Shoulder to shoulder with everybody. You know, maybe they get a new school. Just everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Centennial High School in Howard County, Maryland is exemplary. I don't think there's one word to describe the students at Centennial. The level of sort of enthusiasm about learning is something that I think is pretty special about the student body here. Unique. Different. All of them are different. Like everyone here is kind. I don't really see too much action between people. The students are extraordinarily hardworking and multi-talented, and they always have been. The arts, athletics, and academics all thrive through Centennial students. You know, Centennial is a great school to be at. So, um, I mean, I feel like our kids are so dedicated, our families are supportive. And the diversity of the student body makes it a melting pot of people who help create a strong community and a successful school. When you think about Centennial in terms of its overall value as an institution, the physical plant doesn't exactly match the rest of uh, the rest of what we're trying to stand for and deliver. Outside of the building looks like a prison. The inside of the building feels like a prison. Yup, a prison. That's the most common comparison that the Centennial building receives. It's, like, it's, a, it's a jail cell. You just want to put it. Centennial's biggest problem is its crowding. Oh yeah, I'm not a big fan of walking in the hallways when everybody's walking around. You won't even like stop the talking about it. You'll just walk and somehow you still be late because of like, the traffic in all the hallways. It's nerve wracking for me. So I'm sure it's nerve wracking for students. Feels like even between classes, you're worried about getting through the crowds and getting to classes, so it's kind of like you never get a break. Crowding is an obvious in-your-face issue that students at Centennial have to tackle every single day. But there are more problems than just the crowding. For instance, the HVAC is inconsistent and generally substandard. It's either really humid or like really cold, no in-between. Because in one part of the building it's cold, but in the other part of the building it's extremely hot. You're taking a test and you're nervous. Like when you're nervous taking a test, it kind of builds up your body temperature already. And then it's also hot in there. Another popular grievance is that there are pretty much no windows anywhere in the school. So one thing about Centennial that's really challenging is the lack of windows. I feel like natural lighting would be so much better, but More like windows. natural. I don't know why we only have one window. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't, I shouldn't worry it because at least I have at one least window. You have. But, I mean, to me, that it makes economic sense. Why not have a row of windows? I don't even need my lights on. Mrs. Reese is right. Having natural light can reduce energy costs greatly, and more importantly, improve student performance. But let's go back to the bigger issue of crowding. Why is it so bad, and has it always been this way? So, I'm Jim Zay. This is my 26th year at Centennial, so I've been here my entire career. Yeah, when I consider I've been here 25 years, and it felt like maybe we were in our last legs when I arrived. Here we are 26 years later, and we're still dealing with a lot of the same issues, sure. The hallway was never meant to be a thing. In a last ditch effort that didn't need to be last ditch at all, HCPSS, the governing body of all schools in Howard County, approved the construction of the ninth grade wing to counteract crowding at the top-ranked Centennial High School. The 2001 renovation and addition added 14 classrooms, increasing the capacity of Centennial from 1,085 students to 1,400 students. The reason I say capacity is because the formula used by HCPSS to calculate capacity in the schools is completely arbitrary. 
High school program capacities are a product of either 80 or 85 percent of the total number of teaching stations multiplied by 25 students. What? Okay, so what that really means is that the capacity of schools in Howard County is calculated solely on the amount of classrooms that a school has. There is no consideration of hallway space, classroom accommodations, and common areas like the auditorium, gym, cafeteria, or student lounges. This renovation that made room for more students only compounded the crowding caused by the already poor design. And even worse, this renovation is the only one in Centennial's history and likely to be the only one for a long time. You see, HCPSS has a history of promising renovations to Centennial and not delivering. Once in 2010, another time in 2012, and now any possibility of a renovation is listed as 2031. Delays and broken promises, and the students are hurting because of it. Studies show that happier students make better GPAs and feel a greater sense of purpose. Even with Centennial's excellence, it's hard not to wonder. What if we had a building that made us happy? Like I feel that Centennial kind of has like almost a depressed vibe due to the fact that the building is quite small and you know insignificant when compared to other schools. Things compounding on each other, it's not almost ideal. Like I, I don't have any classes that are close to each other, so I'm always in the crowd. And it's just like not, it doesn't work. It's got to be different. You can't ever relax in the hallways. And like you can't like have a locker or anything. It's like, yeah, it's, not, it's like not how high school is like supposed to be, kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, like, I'm used to it. It's fine. Let's escape. Let's take off. We are the stepchild of Howard County is what we're looked at, right? Because we're asked to do more with less. And that has been the case here since I went to school. You know, our motto here is where people are important. And so we value relationships. They're very accepting people. Very energetic. A lot of us show spirit. It's one of the most accepting places you can be because you can be anything here. No one cares. I'm proud to be a Hammond student because I can say how amazing it is to be at the school. Hammond High School, home of the Golden Bears, was the same building as Centennial. They were constructed at the same time and received the same additional wing 20 years ago. The only major difference is Centennial has about 300 more students than Hammond does. And the conditions at Hammond were... Awful. It was awful. <laughs> the general consensus was that the school was falling apart. Um, there was always something wrong. It was just really like beat down. You could tell it's been here for like a really long time. Just like Centennial, but probably a bit worse, the conditions of the building hit the students hard. I don't know, the building's just not nice. And it's kind of, it kind of sucks when people walk into our school and it's like, you're not proud of like what it looks like. You're around that long enough, and especially when you're not as successful, you get that low self-esteem. It makes the students feel like we're not important. They're you know, like, we're coming to a school that's nasty. It doesn't motivate you to want to learn. And Hammond was right by Centennial through all those delays and broken promises. Eventually, teachers, students, and most importantly, parents became fed up. So they created a movement to finally get a renovation. What is a big bad bucket? Well, before the renovation, the science classrooms at Hammond didn't have running water, so they resorted to carrying buckets around in order to do labs. As bizarre and unbelievable as that sounds, that was the situation. And now Hammond is receiving a complete systemic renovation. They're getting brand new hallways and classrooms, and windows, and an HVAC that kind of works, and a second floor? I'm thinking we need this at Centennial. No hard feelings towards HCPSS, of course. It's important to approach all issues with a sense of understanding towards the other side. But Centennial absolutely needs a renovation. Now, not 10 years from now, through an entire generation of students. Now, it's time for a new Centennial. I know money is tight. You can give them that argument. But when you're talking about investing in your future, the future of this county, there's no better way to spend money. Where you been? Where you been? I'm thinking about some time that you could spend. You could spend with me, baby. Do you got some time that you could spend? It's a trend, baby. We all gonna die in the end.
we can catch a couple vibes on that mug, mug.